My name is Jacob Adams. I'm a fitness and leadership coach. I help people just like you get to the next level. In the gym, building strength, going for that PR, burning fat, designing nutrition and supplement programs, and perhaps more importantly even, developing winning mindsets. Have you recently suffered an injury in the gym or maybe outside the gym playing a sport or maybe you're being smart? Maybe you're watching this video to, as the title says, prevent an injury. Whatever the situation, thanks for joining. And my story with injuries has luckily been one of uh, minor injuries, minor meaning none of them have needed to be attended to with uh, invasive surgery. Over the course of training for over 20 years, I started weight training in 1996, uh, been in uh, sports all my life, whether it's little league football, uh, everything from tennis, cycling, skating, skateboarding, swimming, baseball, uh, even rollerblading, ice skating, etc. I like to tell people, as long as it doesn't involve snow, I've played it. And so really all my life I've been active. Uh, the one major injury I've had was in skating. I broke my wrist and that actually needed, uh, you know, a cast and it was a clean break, meaning both bones, the radius and the ulna have been broken. Other than that, uh, sparing some car accidents that weren't my fault, a drunk driver hit me. Uh, tightened, up, tightened up some muscle tissues in the back. I've not suffered any injuries that have needed surgery. Now, in my 20 some years of training, again now 23 years or so of training, uh, I have had knee issues that have dealt with stiff knees, inflammation in the knees, a tight shoulder, uh, inflamed discs in my back, and stuff like that. So my overall injuries have been present. Specifically, I think in general, people are going to hurt their shoulder in, or their knees or their back, also their ankles. So in, in my experience, what I've seen with clients is that generally speaking, if you have an injury right now that happened to you while doing some sort of sport, the chances of it being a knee injury uh, are high. The chances of it being a shoulder injury are also high. If you think about it, most people don't have an injury on their chest, like their chest muscle didn't just pop. Unless, of course, they are doing some chest extensive work or they were hit by something directly. But for the most part, I've seen that people will have an injury in their back. 80% of Americans uh, experience some type of back pain slash injury in their life. Uh, that has to do with sitting a lot. We won't go into the causes right away or right this moment, but 80% of Americans have some sort of back pain, uh, stiff feet on the bottom, uh, plantar fasciitis, tight calves causing plantar fasciitis, uh, walking in heels for some women, et cetera, et cetera. So today I wanted to get into how to prevent injuries uh, and not so much as well, let's go into the technicalities so much that it has become some very weird video that I'm getting right down to the nitty gritty of every possible injury. No, today I'll be giving you some applicable uh, mindsets as to how to approach workouts and how to approach taking rest days, what supplements to take to reduce inflammation, things like this, the variables that I look at always when I want to make the body heal faster, uh, things that I do to keep my body, like I said, not having any invasive surgeries for over 20 some years, except the time I broke my wrist and that was a sport in a race and I was very ambitious and as a kid and I didn't have the tools or the equipment or the protection or the pads. If I would have just had some wrist guards, I think I would have been okay. In any case, so what I've seen is typically that these injuries that I've had, however minor 
typically on the knees have prevented me from squatting or walking great or kind of walking with a limp or not allowing me to stand up fully or getting being in pain as I get out of bed. That's what I've seen. In my clients' lives, what I've seen is injuries will slow down their training. We have to stop squatting for a little bit. We have to baby the, the area, uh, reduce load off the area. That's what I've seen is the consistent issue with everyday minor injuries. And not to say that a client will get injured every day. As a matter of fact, what I've seen is with a little bit of the body giving a person some warning, a little check, with a conversation addressing what that person did. Maybe they were running and they had not been running a long time and they just decided to do three miles. Now their knees are hurting, their feet are hurting, they have shin splits. Sort of them going through the pain of that one week of like inflammation, sometimes that's enough for me to talk, tell a client and say, listen, you know, you went, you took your, your will for granted here. Yes, you were able to do what you set your mind to, but now you have a minor injury. And what we're gonna need to do is take a step back, reevaluate if you're gonna wanna keep running, and if so, we're gonna have to build the body up to, uh, to handle that workload in a safer, uh, more, more efficient, more long-term uh, way. And we're gonna keep monitoring your body so that if your body is just telling you, hey, slow down, step back, we take the step back. Now, right there, what you just heard, however sensible, is already a key as to how to prevent an injury. That's a huge key you just heard. The body will give you a warning sign, and if you have enough respect for what your body's telling you, you'll listen, and you'll adapt and work with the body. It's like clay, you kinda gotta work with it. And that's what I found over the course of 20 some years of training. As a matter of fact, what inspired me to make this video is I'm currently uh, standing on a knee. My left knee has has been really bothering me for the last two weeks now. It's not excruciating pain, but my range of motion is affected. I'm not able to squat with load very well. It's stiff. It's not feeling good. You know, that plus family issues, plus financial stresses, just like work, you know, my sleep has been affected. You know, it's not been the most fun of feelings the last two weeks. The last two to three weeks have been dauntingly very emotionally taxing. Now, what I'll tell you is this, the worst possible thing that I could do to this knee is to have some sort of man up attitude and go to the gym right now and put on 225 pounds, which is nothing heavy, nor is it anything light for someone of my training caliber, or someone that's been training so long. I use a belt, I wrap my knees, I know yoga, I can stretch. I've done thousands upon thousands upon thousands of squats. I know proper biomechanics. You know, nothing says that that is something that is hard to do for me. But my knee says it's hard for me to do today. So one of the things that I've seen as a trainer is to push through pain, you know, real significant pain is a mark for disaster. Where the body does respond to respect. You can write that down. The body will respond to respect. If I take my fish oil to reduce inflammation, if I get my sleep, I have my protein, I take my protein, I increase collagen, I do my stretches, I do myofascial release, foam rolling to increase pliability in the moving tissues. You see how I reduce workload, but I do, I do workload to it to stimulate overall functionality, like maybe a row, a row machine. Uh, a biking that's still using the quad and it's still using a full range of motion in the knee, but it's not creating impact that is gonna drive more aggravation to the, to the tissues, like the meniscus joint or the meniscus, the patella, the overall kneecap, the, the ligaments, the tendons. They're not gonna be stressed and agitated further. And that's a huge key in this particular situation. 
okay? Now, I feel great being able to talk to you like this as a fitness and leadership coach, meaning uh, a lot of times I talk about the leadership concepts. Uh, in the video like this, you're getting to see me speak directly my day-to-day -day work. Like this is day-to-day -day for me, day-to-day, day-to-day, -day -day, session after session. This is really what it's like behind the scenes uh, as a fitness coach. In any case, going back to what I was saying is, the body will respond to respect. Like I said, you might wanna write that down. And nourishment. And if the body is telling you, hey, there is pain here, and you do not address it, and you try to work through it with heavy load, in the gym specifically, I don't care how good your form is, if you do not respect the healing process, you can aggravate that further. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is common sense. Well, yes. Yes, it has a lot of common sense to it that I will give you. And still though, I was actually on Colum Monvoger's Instagram and he has a ruptured quad tendon. That I had to look up what it was. And he, I think he misplaced his kneecap. Now, he did this uh, by rappelling off a cliff. But what I could tell you by, as let's say I was in one of his coaching circles, I could have stepped into that person's circle and said, listen, you are doing so great. You're training great. You just recovered from some bicep injury. What you need to do right now is reduce the level of high risk activities and, and grip your mind around being less about maybe the, the flash in the pan or you know, the, the adrenaline rush or the high risk activities. My theory with Callum Von Voger's injury, and I say this respectfully, is he had so much load in, into his muscle tissues from training so heavy, and he wasn't used to training with as much compound movements like a push jerk or things like this that when his body went into a complete functional movement like a rope dangling over a cliff, his body didn't respond well to that workload. In other words, he's a, he was an extremely off the charts strong individual. That's a given. But the muscle already had so much load into it that it sort of gave very readily, right? Now, that's the said, I frame that as a theory because I realize that whenever you say anything about anyone, people can get sensitive. But my 22 some years of training and knowing what happens with muscle and tension and how tension builds in the tissue, and this is a very strong individual, like I'm giving you that, like that is a given. It's a very strong individual. So the muscle is sort of like creating all of this pressure around these joints. And so a little bit of move, a little, a little quick little move in the wrong angle created this very strong, very athletic looking individual put um, in almost like losing his knee. You could say like that's very close to like maybe he could have snapped the entire muscle, the, the entire knee off, you know, giving you like an exaggeration of if that's all it took, imagine landing a little bit with more with more of a wrong angle. If that's if that little movement, if you saw the video that he posted, that little movement created such a torque. I think to myself, wow, this person's younger than me, stronger than me. And I would have not mentioned Colum Mac uh, Van Van Moger. I would have not mentioned him had I not seen another thing. Now, as a coach, this is what I'm saying. Fitness and leadership coach, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you look at this other thing he did where he was um, curling 400 pounds with a partner, uh, that's like to, to be simple, 
so you can understand where I'm going at. That's like a a PR show off kind of thing. Like it's like you're curling 400 pounds with a partner. Like that's not necessarily a functional move that is needed. Does that make sense? It's more like it's got that I did it for the gram type frame. Now, as I say that, understand how that increases risk. And someone can say, well, Jacob, you know, it's still, it's still a workout. You know, that is, hey, you can't do 400. I wouldn't want to. Like, it's not, I don't want to. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't see the value, just because I don't want to, doesn't mean I don't see the value as to why he would do it. Like, I get it. Instagram views, comments, engagement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you get it. Like, I'm a fitness and leadership coach. My objective is not to get hurt. So, if my body would not be able to handle, let's just say, that on my that workload on my own, let's just say, okay, can you curl 200 pounds on your own? 200 pounds with strict form. I mean, I'll put it like this. I could curl 50 pound dumbbells with good form. So that's 100 pounds. But I unlikely could not curl 100 pounds on each arm with good form. I couldn't likely curl 100 pounds like this, <clears throat> right? So really, what would I be doing trying to move 400 pounds, right? In that particular instance, and Callum McGover was moving 400 pounds, and I guarantee you, like, the dude probably won't do that again. Like, probably won't. But if you take some precautionary attitudes towards your training, you're going to save yourself a lot of injuries. I'm using Colin McGover because he's a respectable figure. He's got two major injuries in the last year. Those are major injuries. Those, those are both, like, significantly big time injuries. You do not want injuries like that ever. Like rupturing a tendon, um, rupturing your bicep muscle. Like those are, those kind of injuries typically don't just heal up and go away. They leave scar tissue for years, for decades that you'll have to work through like for, for a long time. Like you're not going to just dilly dally your way out of that. Okay. Uh, well, that's what I want to tell you. Like, it's not like, Oh, Jacob's no fun. Like it, I got told you I have 20 some years of training. I've been tw training over 20,000 hours myself. That's, that's like an understatement. And I'm telling you right now with my little injury right here, look, I'm standing on my left leg right now. I'm flexing it a little bit. That's fine. But I, again, I would not with this injury, with this small injury, I would not go and squat even 135 right now. Now, I probably could. I would probably be fine. But I already tried squatting 135, 225, and while I was able to do it, it re-aggravated a little deeper. It was already getting better. So now I'm just like babying it. So the key to preventing an injury is to understand that showing off is not the ideal way. If you find yourself unprepared to undertake an endeavor and you have not warmed up, you've not prepared for that, you've not set yourself up to be proficient, that's gonna save you like 80 to 90%. You know, you, if you're gonna be on a trapeze as a, as a circus act with no, no net, I guarantee you, you're gonna have to drill the fuck out of that till it's on point so where you're not insane to yourself for doing it. It's, you've built up to it. Had Colum McGover in this respect done some repelling, had been more proficient in the skill, then the, the chances are that he would have not had these two injuries. And this simplicity is not like, once you understand that, you gotta remove show off attitude. Now, the times I've injured my shoulder, I was trying to do a one-handed uh, handstand. I weighed 200 and some pounds. You know, while a two-handed ha handstand was fine, a one-handed handstand was a little bit of a show-off and I injured myself. So remove the show-off attitude from your training and you're gonna save yourself 
so much. Now, when you kind of over push it because you're not necessarily showing off, but you're redlining it a little bit, your body will probably give you a little bit of a warning. Listen to that warning and make sure you come back to a full recovery before you start pushing and redlining again. Don't just whatever. Now, fish oil is an excellent thing to take. Here's one I use. You can get this from me. My number is 512-994-7328. This helps reduce inflammation. Whenever you reduce inflammation, the amount I take is 3,000 milligrams or three grams of the DHA, EHA, the D E H E H A D H A. They're big names, okay? That's what helps reduce inflammation. So prevent the show off attitude, build the skill more proficiently. When you do over push it and your body gives you a warning, come back to zero, come back to a neutral, strong body, then re restart the training program. So ease up. These are simple ideas. They're not out of there. There's nothing crazy. Do some yoga, but I'm telling you, that's what makes a difference. Love to hear your thoughts and comments. This is Jacob Adams. I'm running, I'm running out of tape or video. We'll see you next time. Comment below.